Hi guys, girls and people with alternative pronouns and welcome to Ray's Painting Place and in this episode we're going to have a go at one of these, a Caunter Matilda. So this is the Warlord Games uh, Matilda kit, great box art, this is the look that we're going for the Quanta camouflage, which was used in the early part of the desert campaign, sort of geometric um, contrast panels uh, on the vehicles, really distinctive look. Um, the box art here is showing it quite blue, um, quite controversial whether it really was blue or not. Uh, we're not actually gonna do a blue one, ours is gonna be a, bit, a little bit um, more shall we say true to the original um, there's plenty of um, research around that suggests that these blue panels weren't really blue they were just a funny shade of green um, so that's the look that we're going to go for um, so yeah so if you want to see what's inside the box we'll open it up and have a look and this is what you get uh, you've got the transfer sheet in here, um, there's three versions. You can do a, a BEF version, a Soviet version, or the uh, the desert version. We're going for the desert version. So, nice little transfer sheet there. A data card, if you're into them, fantastic. Uh, instruction sheet, terrific. Um, you need to pay quite a bit of um, close attention to the instructions because you can build the uh, three different versions, as I mentioned, uh, the BEF one, the Soviet one, and the desert one, and there are differences between the three different tanks, so make sure that you follow the instructions carefully as to which version that you're going for. As I said, we're going for the, uh, the Western desert, so there's specific instructions for the way that the turret's laid out, and for the way that the um, tracks are built. So pay attention to that and there's a very simple painting guide as well with some suggested colors they've gone for um, a blue green color and a chocolate brown color for their corner um, colors over a desert yellow base um, I'm not actually going to use those colors because I've got preferred alternatives but by all means stick to these you'll end up with a um, with a nice um, a nice looking tank either way, but uh, I'll put the colours that I'm going to use uh, in the description of uh, the video, so don't worry about that, and I'll show them as we're going along. So that's your instruction sheet. Uh, here's your sprues in a great big sort of Ziploc bag, which is interesting. Um, that's the exhaust deck. There's the body of the tank. Interestingly, the um, there are two different turret variants, um, but you haven't quite got enough parts to build two completely separate turrets, which is a real shame because they give you the option of building the two-pounder armed tank or the howitzer armed tank. Um, so it was a pity that you can't build two, two completely different turrets. And... Um, you know, set one up with with the uh, anti tank gun, and set one one up with the um, with the howitzer, because then you could swap them over for game purposes, depending on how you were playing it. Um, you know, if you were that bothered, and you might be able to magnetize it. Don't know, but uh, anyway, I'll be building. I think the two pounder arm version um, for this setup. So nice big chunky sprues there, and there's the. Uh, track frames there with that quite distinctive look so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get that all assembled and um, probably sprayed in uh, a base colour of uh, army painter desert yellow and um, I'll show you when that's finished you can see what that looks like Okay, back in a bit. Okay, um, here's the tank. 
all nicely sprayed up and ready to go. Um, I'll be touching up anything that I've missed with the uh, desert yellow because that's the, the spraying colour. If you use a different colour then obviously you'll need to t touch it up with a different colour. Um, I'm then going to be going over it with dark sand as a base. Um, maybe leaving some of the desert yellow in um, places where you might expect there to be some darker shadows. So um, perhaps here with the mud shoots, um, places like that. Uh, that gives a nice effect. And then anything that I'm going to be painting uh, metal later, I'll be using this dark rubber colour. So uh, I'm going to be doing that and then uh, I'll show you when that's done. Okay. Okay, so we've done all that. Um, as you can see, we've lot, left lots of um, the desert yellow colour showing in the various um, shadow air, shadowy areas to try and give that nice impression of depth on the detail, um, which I think has worked quite well. Um, it takes a while. Um, but I think it's worth it. The alternative, if you don't want to do it that way, is to paint the dark sand over the entire tank and then use um, the uh, a light wash, uh, a light tone wash, um, to get into these cracks and crevices. But you, you might spend some time also going around tidying that up afterwards. But whatever you feel is easiest. I wanted to do it this way, I like the effect, so... Uh, that's that. Um, interesting point to note, photographs suggest that the exhaust was pretty much black like that at the back. I hope you get that in focus. There we are. Like that. If you're wondering what colour those details are. And I'm not absolutely certain about the colour of this uh, braided hose that, that runs around the engine deck. Um, but I've painted it in sand colour, though I might change that if I can find a decent colour reference for it. Um, but anyway, so that's the base colours done. Um, next bit is the start of the corner. And the first corner colour um, I'm going to be using is German Camouflage Beige, which is a very sort of paley green colour to my eye. Um, although it's called beige, there is a hint of beige in it, I guess, but... Um, I often use it for webbing on British troops, but it works good for uh, the, the lighter of the corner colours. So I'm going to be doing that next. Um, I found some references on the net for the pattern, um, for exactly where the, the, the geometric lines go. I'll try and post a link up in the comments. And um, I'll basically be following that. So to start with, I'm going to put those... Um, those green patches on and then I'll, I'll come back and show what that looks like okay okay here we are with the, um, the first of the colors painted on and as you can see um, it's uh, it's gone on quite well it needed a couple of coats and it's a bit tricky to get the some of the lines straight but um, often you only need to keep one of the lines straight because the other one's going to be covered by the darker colour, the next coat. And um, so that's something to bear in mind when you're doing it. Um, and again, hang on, I'll show you around there. Got some of the engine deck, and I wasn't quite sure where the dark green's going to go there, so I've um, painted a little bit more than perhaps I should have done, but anyway. Um, so the next colour to go on is uh, this one. This is the uh, olive grey. I'm going to use this for the darker colour and um, I'll paint that on and then uh, I'll show you what that looks like. Right there we go um, the corner colours are now on. Um, you can only really appreciate this when you kind of see it from a particular angle and you see how all the all of the weird shapes kind of come together. Can I get that? There, like that. And the sides reasonably straightforward, but some of those weird angles, uh, the way they all combine, it's great. Um, so that's all done. Uh, now, in the process of that, what we've done, 
what I've done is I've, for instance, filled in some of these panel lines by accident. Um, so what I'm going to do now is re-establish those with um, either the desert yellow or the soft tone. As I said earlier, you can do either way. Um, just to um, bring out the, the depth in those lines. So I'm going to do that and then um, I'll show you how that looks. Okay, right, so that's done. Um, it's nice and quick. It doesn't show up terribly well on camera, but um, it does make a, a difference. Um, so the next thing is the detailing and the weathering. Uh, details such as the the spare track links on, on the, the front mud guards here, um, the tools on the deck, um, things like that. They need painting up. Uh, and then the overall weathering. Um, now I'll be using a combination of weathering powders, pigments, which you've seen in uh, the Stuart, the Burma Stuart video. Um, I'll put a link up for that. Um, so I won't be going into too much detail with that. And then the other thing here, there'll be um, lots of dust using the pigment. There'll be various washes um, to help give that that worn, tired desert look. There's a nice um, desert dust wash that Vallejo um, produce which settles into cracks and crevices that's quite a good one the streaking grime is quite nice around the engine deck there's a rust texture which is very harsh you've got to be really careful the way you use that one uh, either dilute it quite a bit or maybe uh, go back over it with um, you know another top coat something like that um, there's various others this one's engine grime um, which Probably won't get much of a look in on this model, but you get the idea. Um, to start with, I'll be doing a dry brush, a very, very light, very gentle dry brush with pale sand, uh, just to pick up some of the the sharper edges. And then after that, as I said, I'll be weathering it down. Um, so I'll start that process, and then um, I'll show what that looks like. Okay. Okay. Um, I hope you can see the grime and the gunge that have worked in there. Um, I've also done some um, chipping effects here and there on the armour, um, just to give it a little bit of interest. Tried to do that on, on the, the sharp edges, as it were, things that might naturally get bashed or bumped or um, you know have stones or whatever falling on them so bits and bobs like that um, lots of dust and grime around the bottom where things naturally cat catch uh, around the uh, filler caps there so yeah I'm thinking that's looking pretty good so just a few more details to finish. Um, I might put a touch more dust over the turret. Not quite sure yet. I'd like to see how it looks and put the transfers on. So I've got to paint up some headlights there, looking at that. Um, I'll put some transfers on and then um, see how that looks. But yeah, I think we're nearly there. Okay, I'll show you that in a minute. Okay, so we're all done. Here's the finished article uh, with the transfers on. Now, um, a little bit of stowage on the side, which I noticed in a, a photograph of the real tank. Somebody had bunged a, a helmet over the lifting ring on the turret, so that looks rather cool, so I thought I'd stick that on. Uh, a little bit more dust and grime on the front, but uh, yeah, there we go. So I'm quite pleased with that, and um, I hope that you've uh, enjoyed watching me uh, paint that and uh, if you have then like share subscribe and uh, i'll see you next time thanks very much for watching bye for now